Welcome to the Graduate Fluids Lesson Series, Lesson 1A, Notation, Scalars, Vectors, and Tensors. In this first of what I hope will be many lessons, we'll review the notation that I'll use throughout this series, and then using this notation I'll define and discuss differences between scalars, vectors, and tensors. Let's talk about the notation for vectors. Most books use bold, lowercase letters to indicate a vector. I use an arrow. For example, u with an arrow on the top is the velocity vector. We're used to writing the components as uvw in an xyz Cartesian coordinate system. However, in this lesson series, get used to instead components u1, u2, and u3 in the x1, x2, x3 coordinate system. This is our position vector, and this is the velocity vector. The position vector can be called x with an arrow on top. What about second order tensors? Most books use bold, uppercase letters. I use a double arrow. For example, capital T with two arrows is the stress tensor. Some authors use tau instead of T for the stress tensor. We'll talk more about second order tensors in the next lesson. Volume versus velocity magnitude. Both of them use a capital V. So to distinguish, I always put a line through my V when it means volume and no line when it means magnitude of velocity or speed. When I type, I use the Arial italic font for volume. Looks something like that. I use Times New Roman font for speed, and we typically italicize all variables. Now let's talk about the del operator. The del operator is a vector, so I write del with an arrow over it to emphasize that it is a vector. For something like gradient of phi, most people write del phi, but this is actually a vector for scalar phi, the gradient of phi, but the gradient of scalar phi is actually a vector, so I write del phi with the arrow. If you look closely, you'll see that most books use a bold del, something like what I show here. I think that's why when people write del phi, they don't put the arrow. Other examples, I would write the divergence of vector u as del dot u. Both of them are vectors. This dot product of two vectors is actually a scalar, by the way. The curl of velocity vector u, I write as del cross u, whereas this is a scalar, this is a vector. Now let's define and discuss scalars, vectors, and second order tensors. We'll do this in Cartesian coordinates x1, x2, and x3. We always define fluid properties at some point p in the domain. Here's my point p in my diagram. This distance would be x1, x2, and x3. A scalar property has a magnitude only. There's no kind of direction. For example, temperature is a scalar that we would define at this point p. Density is another scalar quantity. A scalar is independent of coordinate system. For example, if we rotate these axes, temperature at this physical point in the domain will not change. Mathematically, a scalar is a tensor of zero order, or a zeroth order tensor. This is important to recognize because now we'll define first and second order tensors. Now let's consider a vector. We'll also define our vector at our point P. Unlike a scalar, a vector has both magnitude and direction. For example, the velocity vector u, which I sketched here, in our x1, x2, x3 coordinate system, this component is u1, this one is u2, and this one is u3. These are all parallel to their associated axes, and I'm trying to draw this in a three-dimensional way. There are several ways we can write u. Some people write uvw, but as I said, get used to using u1, u2, and u3, and x1, x2, and x3 instead of x, y, and z. Alternately, people write uvw this way, but let's get used to using this notation. This is the preferred way that I'll use in this lesson series. A vector is independent of coordinate system. For example, if we rotate this coordinate system that we drew, u does not change, but the components of u change. Physically, this velocity vector at point p remains the same regardless of what coordinate system we choose, but these components, u1, u2, and u3, depend greatly on the coordinate system. A vector is a tensor of order 1, or a first order tensor, so it's one level higher than a scalar, which is a zeroth order tensor. Since we've talked about zero and first order tensors, we'll now talk about second order tensors. This one is much harder to visualize, especially on a 2D plane. Like a vector, it has magnitude and direction, but it has these for any surface on which it acts. So to illustrate a second order tensor, we first pick a surface. For example, I'll sketch a vertical surface that runs through our point P. We define the unit outward normal as n, a unit vector. 
Once we've picked the surface, then we can define a vector acting on that surface. The best example is the stress tensor, T with two arrows indicating it's a second order tensor. By the way, here's another notation that I use. Curly brackets indicate the dimensions of. The dimensions of the stress tensor are the dimensions of force per area, and that has to be acting on a surface. On this vertical surface, for example, the force per area might look something like this, an inward force acting on this particular surface whose normal is in the x1 direction. This force per unit area is a vector, so it has direction and magnitude. But even at the same point p, the vector changes if we pick a different surface. For example, at our same point p, suppose I now choose a horizontal surface. The unit outward normal vector is now vertical, parallel to the x2 axis in our diagram. What does the vector force look like on this surface? Well, it could be completely different from the one we had up here for the vertical surface. It has a different magnitude and direction. In fact, comparing the two, I drew this one as inward and this one as outward. Similar to scalars and vectors, second order tensors are independent of the axes we choose. For example, we can rotate the axes, but t does not change. We still have the same tensor property at this point p, but its components will change. t, of course, is a second order tensor. That's what we're talking about. So in summary, a scalar is a zeroth order tensor, a vector is a first order tensor, and of course a second order tensor is, well, a second order tensor. You can extend this to tensors of higher order. You can have third, fourth, etc. order tensors. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.